Hello everyone. My name is Andreas and I'm presenting this work that we call Different Together, designed for radical placemaking, on the behalf of our team with Andesh, Adrian and Rob. Inhabitants in many urban places are isolated from each other and from the means of shaping the place they live in. In response, we explore what it can mean to design for radical placemaking, where we bring inhabitants together in conviviality and guard against them being separated from the means of production, which otherwise often happens in placemaking through gentrification, for example. And this might be important because if inhabitants find themselves in isolating places, what chance do they have to change their shared ways of living and respond to the extinction that we're facing? Our work is situated through autoethnography in a student housing campus in Stockholm, Sweden. We made four design proposals and we critiqued them with Lefebvre's theory of utopia. This is a critical theory about how we should make places. Our contribution is an illustration of how design with critical theory can happen. For us, it happened through critique, and it helped us think in new ways. Let's look at a part of how this happened for us. One of the designs, tree bells, are containers that hold notebooks and pens to allow inhabitants to capture local histories and experiences in a tranquil place and share them. The bells move in and out of range serendipitously and so invites visits over time. The tree bells are meant to work against the transient and isolated character of this place by allowing relations to others to accumulate. In one scenario, tree bells might at first work for active and diverse social relationships, which is part of Lefebvre's utopia. But in turn, it could also invite capital-driven forces to exploit this value, which is against this utopia. Landowners might like the social relationships and practices that Treebell support, and even use it for marketing, for example. And so Treebell risks being part of gentrifying the place and reproduce the very alienation that we want to struggle away from. This is a tension between inhabitants and landowners. But if we want inhabitants to have a rich social fabric and be able to shape the place they live in, how can we do placemaking that avoids exploitation by landowners? One answer to this may come from the second design, Scream Tree. Scream Tree has to do with a tradition that inhabitants have at the campus. On Tuesday nights, people scream out their windows for a couple of minutes. This is a sort of fun, non-conforming activity and a shared emotional release. So Scream Tree is an incentive for people to gather during the scream and allow personal bonds to forge, which would align with Lefebvre's utopia. Scream Tree takes the form of an artwork that feeds on the screams, which then alters the artwork's appearance. In this way, Scream Tree is meant to work against the lack of ways for inhabitants to engage with each other and support communality and lively social relationships. But by concentrating the screams to a specific location, Scream Tree might also increase the likelihood of disturbance. And landowners might not want to embrace or market this practice because they might want to make the place widely attractive. So interestingly, by doing placemaking that has inconvenience for some might actually stop landowners from exploiting the practice, which was the issue raised with tree bells. A tension here between inhabitants would be put to work against landowners dominating this place. This aligns with Lefebvre's utopia, where inhabitants have contradictory interests and also continuously work them out. So how could we avoid excessive inconvenience for some inhabitants and help inhabitants to continuously balance tensions and reshape their place? The concept of infrastructuring can help us here. Infrastructuring is basically about designing a socio-technical resource uh, that people can appropriate for their emerging concerns, which a design would allow for, but not necessarily anticipate. In our critique, we imagine three ways that uh, our designs might do infrastructuring. First, we could design for out-of-function, 
where we specify a time when a design should not be functional anymore, which could make it easier to relocate or fully question its existence, rather than leaving the design until it's long overdue or broken. We could also design for levels of appropriation. This means that, for example, with ScreamTree, Inhabitants might not only appropriate the light response that happens to their screen practices, but they would also be able to control what the light response is. They can reprogram it. That would be another level of appropriation. We could also consider designing for traces of appropriation. For example, old books from the tree bells could become an archive in some common space, and the fact that the place is appropriated can then be recognized by inhabitants and inspire them to think about further and similar changes to the place. All of these things could serve inhabitants to do placemaking in a way where inhabitants continuously negotiate their tensions, inspire each other, and make each other capable of shaping their place, like Lefebvre's Utopia suggests that we should do. Okay, so at this point, let's take a step back. What happened here when we were designing through critique with theory? We identified two qualities of Lefebvre's theory that were important for our context and designs. Conviviality and participation in the means of production. We picked one of these qualities, conviviality, and followed it across the designs, across stakeholders, in different scenarios. We were looking for what consequences this quality, as embodied in the designs, could have. And we were relating these consequences to the critical theory and its full set of relevant qualities it promotes. And we were also relating the consequences to our design context, all through which we could qualify aspects of those consequences as good or bad. When we saw differences between what the designs were doing and what the theory said we should be doing, we saw, okay, these differences are tensions. And so we laid out what it is that makes these differences into tensions. This exercise basically helped us see what consequences of the designs are possible and what consequences step outside what the theory wants. In other words, we saw what the designs could do and what they should be doing. And when we saw how a design stepped outside what the theory wants, we imagined what kind of design quality that could realign this design or tension so that it aligns with or embodies the theory. This imagining was grounded in our four designs at hand, our knowledge of the literature and our understanding of the context. What made Lefebvre's theory particularly generative for us uh, when we were analyzing and imagining were the tensions that it seeks to accept and negotiate, those between inhabitants, and those tensions that it seeks to resolve and favor to one side, which were those between inhabitants and landowners. When we saw these tensions embodied in our designs, that is when we started to get a grip on the design challenge and to think in new ways. The these tensions that we identified and the possible responses that we imagined helped us in the end to get a richer preliminary understanding of the design space. And we imagine that similar things to what we've been doing here can be attempted in other situations. To wrap this up, we can note that designing through critique with theory helped us think critically without intervening. And instead of implementing, we came to revalue our situation and see some things that we actually should be thinking about. Some of these things might not have appeared in, say, a month-long deployment. Finally, to learn how to do critical design better, we could ask ourselves, how could design through critique with theory happen as a participatory activity or in preparation for it? And how can we summarize critical theory in an actionable way, also for non-experts and maybe in embodied ways? Our hope is that this can help us make critical design. And thank you so much for listening in, and we're happy to chat about this with you, and take care.